Well, here we are, week number four, final week of September, baby. And I gotta tell you, yeah, we had an impromptu video yesterday. Please, please go watch that real quick, you know, just to get a better understanding of what in the world's going on. Um, things are changing by the second, so, you know, trying to do a video that'll take like 10 to 15 minutes is, um, you know, it is what it is. But in any case, week four is looking kind of interesting. You know, last week was kind of a stinker. You know, the first two weeks of the season were much better than this. Week zero, not so much either. I mean, it didn't, week zero really didn't help us, you know, learn anything. But then again, it did. Um, and unfortunately, you know, we got to talk about some of these other games first. There's still, there's still some games that don't really matter as much in the grand scheme of things. So let's talk about them first. The number one team in the country, Georgia. They're taking on Kent State. And we all know Kent State's wallet is a winner because they took on Washington and Oklahoma already. And uh, the dogs might shut them out, plain and simple. Honestly, I, 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 don't, I don't think Kent State scores in this game. Central Michigan's taking on Penn State. I think Sean Clifford might be able to throw the ball a little bit more here. Of course, you know the running game is going to be good. You know, Central Michigan just hasn't been very good all season. You know, so, I mean, Central Michigan's trying to collect their money. Rhode Island taking on Pittsburgh. Um, Rhode Island, I think, got blasted last week by Delaware. And we'll see if Keaton Slovis plays or not, but, um, you know, heading into ACC play, the Panthers are going to need Slovis. Middle Tennessee is going to take on Miami, and Miami has to move the ball a little bit better than they did against A&M. They struggled at times throughout the other two games before they played A&M, and, you know, they just got to do better moving the ball and stuff like that. Tulsa's taking on Ole Miss. Um, the Rebels defense, they got to go through a pretty potent Tulsa offense, but, you know, that, that should be too hard, you know, you know, you know, it, this is an Ole Miss team that has improved rapidly. I mean, then again, you know, all three teams they played so far have been pretty bad. Yeah, Georgia Tech, unfortunately, is pretty bad, and this might come back to bite somebody, but we'll talk about that somebody in a moment here. Still trying to figure out what the QB situation is there. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the QB situation is there. Kentucky taking on Northern Illinois. You know, Will Levis, he might have a ton of fun in this game. The Cats do need to run the ball a little bit better, though. I think that's something they need to work on as they continue to go through the season. They're ranked number eight, by the way. Kentucky's ranked number eight. Um, and then NC State taking on a UConn team that got shut out last week. And all Devin Leary and company need to do is just cruise here. They need to just, you know, just get through this game without too much problem, and you get Clemson. You know, next week you get you get Clemson. Wyoming taking on BYU. Yeah, this is the same Wyoming team that stunned an Air Force team that a lot of people picked to be that Group of Five representative. I, don't, I did not expect Wyoming to be Air Force last week. In fact, a lot of people had Air Force favored in every single game. Every single game. So the Cougars, they, they got a rebound. Can't overlook the Cowboys. Got a, got a rebound nicely in the late night slot. And so we move on up to the noon games on Saturday. Yeah, there's it's like a game on Friday, but there's a game on Thursday too. But who cares about those games? Um... And only involve teams that you know are going to be interesting enough to talk about. Um, but if you don't want to watch any of these, be sure to watch that Kansas Duke game. Yes, this, that's not a bat. That, that's not a basketball game you're talking about here. We're talking about football, I know. But if you don't want to watch these, then I suggest you look at that. Um, Maryland's taking on Michigan in the big noon game as Talia Takavailoa and the Terrapins head on up to the big house. To take on J.J. McCarthy, Brick Corum, and the Wolverines' mighty defense. Um, we know Talia can ball, but Maryland's defense is going to have to keep up with the Wolverines. Can they do that? I'm not entirely sure. 
Clemson's taking on Wake Forest. You know Clemson's been a bit lackluster. DJ Uilagalale has got to get has got to get it together, man. This Clemson defense has to get it together too. They've played inconsistent at times. You let a bad Georgia Tech team, you know, just just do some things against you at times. So that tells me more about Clemson. The way that Ole Miss shut out Georgia Tech it tells me more about Clemson than Georgia Tech because we all know Georgia Tech's not very good. And um, Sam Hartman, he might be lighting up this Clemson defense. If he can light up this Clemson defense, we're going to have to have a little shootout. Um, and I don't know if Clemson can, you know, keep that momentum up with the way their offense has been playing. I don't know if they can keep that up. They got it. They got. They got. They got to do something. They got to do something out here. Uh, hold on. Sorry, my phone was ringing. Um, and then you got Baylor, Iowa State. You know. Um, yeah, Clubs the Wake Forest is going to be, you know, one of my top games of the week along with Maryland, Michigan. Um, Clemson, can they, can they, you know, keep the ball rolling against a Wake Forest defense that has to be good? We'll see. And then Baylor, Iowa State, if you don't want to watch, you know, either of those two games, you want to watch Baylor, Iowa State. You got a battle of good defenses here. Baylor's lost the game, Iowa State's unbeaten, and, you know, Dave Aranda, Matt Campbell, they are going to have a defensive clinic out here. I can feel it, you know. Uh, I feel like I might have to switch on over to this one, you know, if Maryland and Michigan gets bad or if Clubs of Wake Forest gets bad. Uh, I don't expect Clubs of Wake Forest to get real bad, but I expect Maryland and Michigan to get pretty bad. So we'll see how in the world that game goes. And then you go into the afternoon. There's a, a trio of games in the afternoon as well that you got to keep your eyes on. Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Texas Tech, and Oregon, Washington State. Florida still ranked in the top 20 um, against the number 11 balls. We all know uh, Anthony Richardson, right? Yeah. Remember how we, you know, lauded him as a Heisman favorite after week one against Utah? Yeah. He hasn't thrown a touchdown yet this season. And I'm wondering... Will the Vols defense keep this man contained? I think they can. I think they can. Head to the hooker and company. That, that Tennessee offense under Josh Heupel is finally clicking the way it's supposed to be clicking. So if Headed Hooker decides, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna throw it all over the Gators. I'm going to be making Gator soup tonight. Uh, I, I'll believe it because, I mean, the Vols look legit. They look legit. Like there's big games coming up for Tennessee that are not just this Florida game. Kentucky, Alabama, uh, Georgia, down the line. I mean, Tennessee, they might have a good case. Florida, you know, looking weirder and weirder by the day because, yeah, they beat Utah. But they had to survive against USF. They're looking a little bit weird out here. They got to get it together. The Gators got to get some passing touchdowns, please. Get the ball moving down the field. And then you got Texas, Texas Tech. Now, I thought Texas Tech would play NC State a little bit better than they did last week, but they did not. And the sad thing is that the Red Raiders keep throwing interceptions, and Texas might take advantage of that. And there's also the factor of B. John Robinson in the backfield. We'll see, you know, how Quinn Edwards is doing by the time we get to this game, but... uh B. John right, my he might be running for like 150 in this game if things go the way they go. Cause I, I I really think I really think this man can run for over 150 yards on this Texas Tech defense. I really think Texas might just have like 400, 500 yards on Texas Tech, no matter who the quarterback is. Like Texas Tech is just they they've had they've had some interesting games. Remember they had to take a ranked Houston in overtime, and that was not. That was not ideal. Not ideal right there. And then, you know, last week against ATC State, things did not go too well for them. So we'll see. And then you got Oregon Washington State, another game I have highlighted, along with the Florida Tennessee game, as the intriguing matchup between Cam Ward, Bo Nix, and, you know, the, the two quarterbacks that, you know, they, they could ball. They could ball. Bo Nix a little bit less so at times. Cam Ward a lot more so at times. 
But uh, Wazoo and the Cougars, oh boy. Home environment against Oregon, that's always a recipe for disaster for the Ducks. Oh boy. The Ducks have to keep the momentum for the BYU game up. They, they got Dan Lanning's defense working breezes at, you know, against BYU last week. They were, they were doing the work. They were making it easy. You know, for themselves and for the offense, and that's just what you want uh, out of out of some out of, out of a last week like that, where you just dominated the entire game. Can they keep this up? Can the Ducks keep this up and cement themselves as a contender in the Pac-12? We'll see. We'll see, because Wazoo ain't no joke out here. They're not. In the evening. Um, the next biggest game highlighted, my fifth game that's been highlighted, Arkansas, Texas A&M, of course. Number 10, Arkansas. Number 23, Texas A&M. K.J. Jefferson and the Hogs go to Jerry World to take on A&M. And the Aggies will see who the quarterback is going to be. Is it going to be Mac Johnson again, or is it going to be Haynes King? If Haynes King is the starter, can he prove himself this time? We all know Anaya Smith and Devon Hatt. A chain, you know, they're gonna be the guys out there for AM. You know, somebody something's gotta give here because uh, the Hogs, their pass defense, uh, it's looking a little lacking. Their pass defense is lacking, and they they gotta get it together. So we'll see what this game entails for Arkansas and Texas A and we'll see what it entails. I think this one should be fun. Arkansas could cement themselves as a contender if they win this game. They're number 10 in the country. A&M, if they lose this game, you might as well kiss the CFP goodbye and get ready for another four-loss season. I already think this team is going to lose four games anyway, but uh, A&M has to win this game against Arkansas. There's other games in the evening involving top 10 teams, including Vanderbilt A&M, or rather Vanderbilt Alabama, not Vanderbilt A&M. When, when does Vanderbilt play A&M again? But Vanderbilt Alabama, uh, Bandy, they're not going to be a pushover. They've won three games already. They're not going to be a pushover. Bryce Young and the Tide have got to keep things, you know, under control here. They gotta, they gotta keep improving. We're in SEC play now for Alabama. They gotta keep it going. Um, the Saint ULM, the Saint FCS opponent. This isn't, this is an SEC team. Yes, it's Bandy, but it's an SEC Bandy that's won three games. So, uh, you know, something's gotta give here. Wisconsin's taking on Ohio State. We all know those Ohio State receivers are itching to run all over a Badgers defense that, you know, at times couldn't even stop a, a mouse. They couldn't stop a mouse. They can't move the ball on offense. Their offense is too anemic. The Badgers, you know, I mean, if Ray Mertz is still the quarterback at Wisconsin. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to watch this team. Come on, get, get that team off my screen right now. And then, you know, Ohio State, they've been just racking up yards and points like it's nobody's business ever since their game against Notre Dame. Something something here has got to give because we know Ohio State has had a rough couple, you know, a rough first game, but they've improved after that. But Wisconsin, they got to get something going now. And then you have Kansas State, Oklahoma. The Kansas State, Oklahoma game kind of lost its luster a little bit. Because, you know, K-State lost against Tulane last week. Adrian Martinez is the quarterback at K-State now. And we all know what he did at Nebraska. Absolutely nothing. And what did he do against K-State? Or rather, what did he do against Tulane last week? Absolutely nothing. It was the Deuce Bond show all over again. I'm surprised Deuce Bond is still at K-State. But, um, you know, the Wildcats, they got to do it. Anything and everything to stop this Brett Benables defense and the arm and legs of Dylan Gabriel. They got they got to do everything to keep Oklahoma off balance. Now this this, this rivalry's been kind of interesting over the past decade or so. K okay, State's had Oklahoma's number at times, but we'll see if Oklahoma can keep it up. They look legit, but can they keep this up? We're in Big Twelve play now. We're in, this isn't, this isn't a pushover type team by any means. This isn't Nebraska. This is a team that can actually play. 
um, despite their limitations at quarterback. But, you know, Kansas State, good team right there. And then, my game of the week. It's stuck on Pac-12 Network. It's stuck on the Pac-12 Network. Oregon State unbeaten, taking on the number seven USC Trojans. I don't think we'll find a way to get to this game. I think I'm going to find a way to watch this game because, oh my goodness, can USC's defense actually stop anything with a pulse? I mean, Fresno State still put up yards against them. Stanford put up yards against them. Everybody put up yards against them. So, hold on. Okay, I keep getting interrupted by spam calls. Um, that was my fault, but anyway, Caleb Williams, Jordan Ad Addison, they, they got to keep this momentum up. You know, this offense for USC has been clicking at the ring Lincoln Riley. And we all know Oregon State. They had a thriller against a Fresno State team that got pretty much bullied by USC's offense. And again, keep in mind, Fresno State still put up yards on them. I'm wondering how in the world, what kind of, what kind of game are we going to get out of this? Because, I mean, Oregon State... At USC are stuck on Pac-12 Network. How? How? How, man? Um, the biggest new, one of the biggest news things that have happened over the past, you know, you know, past uh, few days is Herm Edwards got fired from Arizona State. Um, the Utes might just cruise in this game, in all honesty, but hey, you never know with. Arizona State. You never know with this Arizona State team that can, you know, and they can do something. But I don't know if it's going to be enough against a Utah team that's certainly looking to re um, reestablish themselves in the conversation for the college football playoff. And then, last but not least, Stanford and Washington. EJ Smith is in the backfield for the Cardinal. But uh, this is the same Stanford team that got picked apart by USC's passing offense. And we'll see if Michael Penix Jr. can keep that up. Can he keep up the momentum from a week ago against Michigan State? We'll see. I don't know. You know, I don't know how the games are going to go because everything is crazy. They get Things get crazy by the day. And I think we're going to be in for an interesting week. I think there might be some good upsets here. And I think, you know, I think we have a recipe for another crazy week. So until tomorrow, I'll see you. Take care.